welcome to Financial Insider Weekly. I'm your host, Michael Gray, CPA. My guest today is John Olegas. And uh, John is the co-author of a book that just came out recently. It's called Getting Started in Employee Stock Options, and it's published by Wiley. And John also writes an email uh, newsletter called Truth and Options. And he's the owner of a company called Truth, uh, Truth and Options as well. Um, also today, I'll put in a little plug for myself here, because we're talking about a subject uh, that we're both involved with. So I've also written a book called Secrets of Tax Planning for Employee Stock Options. And uh, you could get this book at Amazon.com. Uh, John's book is a little more widely available, but you could also get it at Amazon. Um, okay, so John was formerly a member of the Pacific Stock and Options Exchange, and he was also uh, on the Chicago Board Options Exchange. He co-founded Options Research, the first analy analytical service to provide theoretical option values to market makers and the general public. For years, he was considered one of the leading options market makers in the world, having created many of the trading and hedging strategies used today. In his younger days, John was a pitcher in minor league baseball, and one of the teams he played for was the Reno Silver Sox, and his first minor league game was against the San Jose Bees right here in San Jose where we're recording this show. So today, John and I will be talking about some of the basics relating to employee stock options. Now before we get started, I want to uh, caution you that this is just an introduction. In fact, we're going to make your head spin because this is, we're going to be covering a lot of material pretty fast. Uh, and this is a big area. So we want you to seek advice from a tax advisor, investment advisor, uh, preferably one that understands especially options hedging strategies, which is, uh, John is the, the champion for that. So with that, let's get started. Thanks uh, for coming Thank today, you. John. Welcome. By the way, folks, John has come to California all the way from Louisiana, so I want to express my appreciation for coming so far uh, to join me today. Okay, John, so first, why did you get involved in advising people with employee stock options? All right. Well, first of all, thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, as, as you said, I was a market maker, mm -hmm. uh, an options market maker on the PICO, then on the Chicago Board Options Exchange for a total of 10 years. And uh, I managed portfolios of options and stocks. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, uh, I guess, in this last decade mm -hmm. that uh, employees and their wealth managers were not doing justice to the employee because they could hedge these positions and avoid uh, forfeiting a lot of the value mm -hmm. uh, back to the company and end up with a lot more for themselves with lower risk. Uh -huh. And uh, so I, I, I started focusing on that and uh, learning the taxes that apply, the SEC rules, and uh, th that's how, uh, what I'm doing is applying the principles that we used as market makers to managing a person's portfolio of stock options and perhaps some other related equities. Okay, good. So let's talk for a few minutes or explain what an employee stock option is. I think a lot of people don't understand really what it is. An employee stock option is really uh, a contract mm -hmm. that the grantee, that is the employee or the executive, has with the company, mm -hmm. uh, whereby he has the right to buy a specific amount of stock throughout a specific period of time. Generally these days, you have a maximum life of options, that is employee stock options, of 10 years, uh -huh. and that's the maximum amount because uh, often it's the case that uh, people don't stay the full year, the right. full 10 years, and they, right. if they leave, effectively the uh, options have reduced their lives. Yes. Uh, 
the options also, before the person can exercise it, he must be in good standing and perform halfway decent at the company, uh, and the options have to vest in him, or, yeah. or he owns the options right. and can exercise them if he wants to. Mm -hmm. And then he either gets the stock or gets paid some cash mm -hmm. on certain type of hybrid type uh, mm -hmm. plans. Uh, but the only thing he can do is he can exercise the options if he chooses. Yes. Okay. That's, that's what his contract allows him to do. He cannot sell those options. He cannot pledge them as collateral for a loan or into a margin account. Right. Generally, the terms of those options are, design, uh, are stated in, a, in two documents. One is the stock and options plan that the company uh, creates and mm -hmm. is generally approved by the stockholders. And then he also has a, a stock option uh, agreement with the uh, company, which is generally uh, describes the number of options he has, the vesting period, the exercise price. Mm. Uh, and that's generally, that agreement is created by the uh, compensation committee or the people who have authority to do that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so basically summed up, it's a right to buy a certain number of shares at a given price for a certain amount of time Right. And there is a vesting period so that uh, over a period of time, he actually, the right vests in him and he uh, has the uh, right that he can't lose at that well, point. Well, he effectively owns yeah. the yeah, options he owns and they have a yeah. value right. uh, when they're granted and they have mm -hmm. a value when uh, the stock moves around. Okay, so, so we're gonna, we'll talk about that in more detail later. Okay. Okay, so let's get in. We have to move <laughs> along. Okay. Uh, what are the basic, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> What are the basic types of employee stock options? Right, there's two types. One is a non-qualified employee stock options, and, uh, and then there is the qualified employee stock options. There's certain uh, restrictions on the qualified option. You have to have, uh, you have to, uh, the option has to be granted two years before you sell the stock, and you have to own it at least one year uh, after you exercise in order to get your long-term capital gain. Mm -hmm. Now, if you sell the stock after owning it only for six months, it's essentially treated uh, like a uh, non-qualified employee stock options. Mm -hmm. Both of these options, when they're granted, uh, there's no taxes on it. The tax treatment is different. Uh, more, uh, the, the uh, qualified options is restricted to employees. So, uh, mm -hmm. And so, that, so if uh, board of directors members who are not employees cannot get them, or, yes. or outside uh, consultants cannot get qualified right. options. Right. So there's a number of restrictions, but the result is if you comply with those restrictions, the gain, if there is a gain, is can be long-term capital gains. Right. Whereas the employee stock options, when you exercise them, it all becomes uh, compensation income the moment you do it. The non-qualified options. The non-qualified options. Right. So we'll, we'll get into a little more de details there. But again, just as a summary, so there's non-qualified stock options and there are qualified stock options. There are two types of qualified options. We're going to mostly talk about incentive stock options. Uh, there is another type that's called employee stock purchase plans, and that basically is a discounted type of a purchase plan. Um, and again, we're not going to get into much detail related to that uh, because we're talking about hedging strategies and so forth. And we're trying to focus on where the most value is here. And employee stock purchase plans is usually a limited number of shares that we're talking about. So, um, but they do have similar holding period requirements. Uh, again, so more than one year after the exercise, more than two years after the grant date, and then the gain uh, related to the sale of those options for regular tax purposes is long-term capital gain.